what is the root value of the nerve which is being shown to you from which the which is passing through the lesser sciatic foramen and uh, typically inferior anal nerve deep perineal nerve they are all ro rooting out of it it is a classical example of a pudendal nerve and what is the root value of pudendal nerve doctor S2, S3, S4 is the root value of pudendal nerve so pudendal nerve will be giving in turn to uh, giving rise in turn to inferrectal nerve perineal nerve, posture sacral nerve, dorsal nerve of penis etc etc now a gastric biopsy is being done and uh, the peptic ulcer patient so you are able to see comma shaped organisms right which are helicobacter pylori so what are all the drugs which are used in helicobacter pylori the triple regime uses amoxicillin, metridazole and omeprazole is what you have to basically understand now a drug whose mechanism of action is being shown to you which is acting at the level of the 50s macrolides typically act like this erythromycin is one such example so how does erythromycin or erythromycin etc especially erythromycin how will it help in the patients who have got the gastroparesis typically it will stimulate the motilin receptors that is the reason some people who take erythromycin tablets will end up in loose motions right so because of its ability to stimulate motilin receptors and increase the peristaltic activity of the gut is what you need to remember now a ovarian cancer is being shown and a histological finding is being shown those darkly staining bodies are called Schiller dual bodies so Schiller dual bodies are the ones which you typically see in case of endodermal sinus tumor among the ovarian cancers is what need to be remembered now a 40 year old presented with pallor splenomegaly and his peripheral blood smear is showing myeloblasts and uh, cells with increased number of nuclear segmentation which is called shift to left so this kind of a shift to left pattern with myeloblasts is a feature which is seen in chronic myeloid leukemia is what you have to basically remember then uh, how do you differentiate the AML from that of the CML if it is acute myeloblastic leukemia you call it as acute when the number of blasts are abundant myeloblast in this myeloblast are not that abundant though they are there right that's the reason it comes under CML then this is a typical example of a bone marrow in AML which shows myeloblasts which are having the inclusions which are needle like which are uh, typically called uh, the R rods is what you need to remember actually we need to show you in a uh, I think on your smartphone you are all having the images right of the test did they give the link or not have they yeah so it become easy for you to peruse through the um, list of uh, images now shown below is the radiograph biopsy electron microscopy what is the marker for this condition so what is shown a radiograph with lytic lesions in the skull and uh, a biopsy showing abundance of histiocytes and beer bag granules which are like the racket shaped shuttle racket shaped beer bag granules are the characteristic on electron microscopy so that all says that it is histiocytosis X so in a histiocytosis X what is the CD marker though you understood it is histiocytosis agar CD marker malum nahi hoi to so just just uh, knowledge is not enough some things which are muggable you have to be sure to mug them now uh, I leave the literature for you what are the tumor markets of histiocytosis one of the favorite questions yes hundred protein peanut agglutinin MHC class 2 and uh, CD1A and uh, CD207 these are the important buzzwords you need to remember when it comes to histiocytosis 
Typically, a histological appearance looks like this. Now, uh, this another example where the CT scan shows the uh, infiltrating periorbital tissue around the orbit you have the tissue into that there is a periorbital uh, invasion it can lead to exostosis so these are all the features of histiocytosis there are multiple calvarial lesions which are presenting on the x-ray like cavitary lesions they are presenting like uh, depressions in the skull of the baby who has got Histiocytosis. Now, what is this wound shown in the figure? It is called a stellate wound, star shaped wound. So, stellate wound is a classical feature that you see in case of contact shot wound. Contact shot wound is what you need to remember. Now, what is this wound? This has a lot of hesitation cuts. A person who kills us will not have hesitation to kill. One Cut, we are done. But if you want to show off to your uh, spouse or uh, girlfriend or a boyfriend, my marro, 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 five, six times cut hua. Deep cut to nahi hua. Before that, if uh, he or she comes and jumps on you, you are lucky. Otherwise, you will really cut ultimately and end up in a radial artery repair. So, all that. So, it is basically suicidal. Then what is the bacteria which can cause the skin lesions which are being shown in this patient who is a swimmer. So they are called swimmer's granuloma. Swimmer's granuloma is caused by mycobacterium mirinum is what you do. This is another way by which you can recognize the lesions of the typical swimmer's granuloma is what you need to understand. Now what is the special stain used to stain these organisms which are racket, racket shaped? They are Cornibacterium diphtheriae and we use the Albert stain in order to stain the Cornibacterium diphtheriae. Then there is a drug, drug B, which is shown in the graphic. Possibly what could it be? Typically, it is preventing the release of the norepinephrine into the synaptic junction in the brain. So, it is guanithidine, which typically has got that kind of mechanism of action. Bretelium and guanithidine are the, um, at the synaptic level they will do the block or the release of the neurotransmitter. So you must know how tricyclic antidepressants and cocaine occur, they are the reuptake inhibitors. Then how does metairosine typically act? Metairosine prevents the tyrosine to dopa conversion which is the precursor of the Catecholamines. Then how does a reserpin act? All these are the important uh, mechanisms of action of the autonomic nervous system. Drugs is one of the favorite question of the examiner. Now in the condition shown below, what is the type of surgery that you want to basically do? There is a unilateral vocal cord paralysis. Unilateral vocal, you can see the two vocal cords. Unilateral vocal cord paralysis and in unilateral vocal cord paralysis we do Ishiki type 1 thyroplasty is what need to be remembered. So typically if you look at unilateral vocal cord uh, paralysis you have type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. Type 1 Ishiki is done for medialization, 2 is for lateralization. Type 3 is for shortening and relaxation in the people who have a low pitch voice. Low pitch is a feminine voice or a male voice? Male voice. High pitch is female voice. So suppose if a low pitched male voice is there in a female. You liked, you liked the girl on shadi.com photograph. But finally, when you have both met, she said, Oh, I like you. I like to marry you, man. If she said that, then uh, you subject her to type 3. Type 4 is, you like that handsome hunk from USMLE cleared, everything. But finally, he is uh, squeaking like a girl. Then you can still marry him because there is a lengthening and tension create. karna padega. Kaisa bit tension aayega, shadi ke baad. Then the female voice becomes a male voice. But total lengthening bhi karna padega. 
So that is Ishiki type 1, type 2, etc. etc. Then what is the type of twin shown and when will this kind of twin will arise? Division at what point of uh, when the two separate at what uh, level of the embryogenesis is a very important question on twinning. So basically you must know what are the types of twins available. You have a di chorionic, diamniotic, monochorionic, diamniotic, monochorionic, monoamniotic. That is how you divide. See fundamentally amnion is the sac surrounding it. Right? And uh, chorion is the membrane. Suppose if there is a monochorionic, monoamniotic heto, there is there will be nothing a layer separating them at all. Right? So this is a monoamniotic, monochorionic twin which typically occur if the separation occurs more than 8 days is what you need to basically remember. So 8 to 13 days following the formation, typically if the separation occurs, then monoamniotic, monochorionic twinning typically occur. This is another example of a 10 week monochorionic diamniotic. This is there is a thin membrane actually not seen here, but uh, I don't know how clear it is. So there is a separate amnions for the two, but chorion being the same. So monochorionic diamniotic. What is this fetal heart rate pattern? Typically, if the deceleration occurs same time when the uterine contraction occurs then it is in sync with it. But if the deceleration is occurring without sync with the, every time the muscles, the uterus of the mother uh, contracts, what is that? Uh, you will find a peak in the graph, mother's uterine graph. But if the fetal heart rate uh, deceleration occur, normally whenever the mother's uterus contracts, there is a decreased blood flow and there is a Slow down, slowing down, that is normal. But if the slowing down of the heart is occurring without being in sync with the maternal uterine contraction, then you call it as variable. So variable contraction is typically a sign of cord compression. Early deceleration is a sign of head compression. And uh, uh, late deceleration is a sign of, uh, uh, is a sign of fetal hypoxia. So when do you call early deceleration? Early or late is in comparison to when the deceleration occurred in relation to uterine myometrial contraction. So you should see the graph of the mother's contraction and check where is the deceleration happening and then see where is a early, where is a late or whether it is variable. That's all. Now what are all are the complications of the condition which is being shown? What is the condition shown? There is a pregnancy, same time there is a myoma in the uterus. So it is a pregnancy in a myomatous uh, uterus. So that is the challenge of this case. So with that postpartum hemorrhage can occur because after the delivery the myoma may prevent the uterus from contracting and hence that lead to atony leading to excessive bleeding. Myoma can lead to obstructed labor. Myoma can undergo red degeneration during pregnancy, which is a aseptic condition, doesn't require antibiotics, only conservative management. So there are all the complications.